Hello everyone! Welcome back to the Action RPG lessons. In lesson number four, we'll look at what collisions are and how we can use them in our game. In order to explain collisions first, I'll bring you over to Sketchpad. So here I've got our three objects in our game, the player, the gem, and the bat. And they all have a colored rectangle around them. This is what we call the collision box, or collider. The collision box covers all the sprite area of the object. So the bigger the sprite, the bigger the collision box around it. And a collision is when those two boxes touch. So right now, my player is colliding with the gem. Now even if it looks like the sprites are not touching, the collision boxes are, so there is technically a collision between them. The same thing happens if the player collides with a bat. So right now in our game, it would look like they're not colliding, but they actually are. So you need to be careful about what we call the white space around objects. It's all this empty space around the sprite that we can see. It's a lot more visible in Sketchpad, but it can be invisible when you're looking at sprites. We can use collisions to accomplish a lot of different things. That can include damaging the players or enemies, or just collecting things like gems. Let's go ahead and set up our first collision. This collision is going to be inside the player loop. We're going to be checking if we collide with a gem. So get out into the bottom of your code and press enter, and make sure you're right up against the wall, because we don't want to be part of this if statement anymore. So here, we're going to check for a collision. So we start with the word if, because we're looking for a condition. And we're checking if we are getting a collision. So get underscore collision. And this function requires two pieces of information. We need to tell it which two objects we want to check for a collision. The first one is obviously the player. We want to see if the player is colliding with something. We separate these two pieces of information with a comma. The second piece of information is the gem. We want to see if co we collide with any gem class. We do that by putting gem inside apostrophes. So what we're doing here is we're checking for any gem class. Now if you wanted to check if we collided with the BG class, you just type BG in there. But we don't want to do that. We want gem. So just like any other statement, we end it with a colon. So when the player collides with a gem, we're going to get rid of that gem to make it look like he collected it. Now in order to do that, we need to do an extra line of code to see which gem we're colliding with. Because right now this line is just checking if we're colliding with any gem on the screen. So we can do that with another line. It's going to use that collision check again, but in a different way. I'm going to write this gem equals get collision. And this collision is going to be the same one as the one above it. What this line is doing is it's keeping track of the information of the gem that we're colliding with. And we need that in order to get rid of it. Now in order to get rid of it, we write the word destroy. And inside these brackets, we tell it which object we want to destroy. Now that we know which object we're wanting to destroy, it's this gem, we just type that inside. And just like that, if you play a game, you can walk over to a gem and collect it. Nice. So wouldn't it be useful if we kept track of how many gems we've collected? Well, there's a way to do that, using what we call a variable. Head over to the player start. We're going to add one more line here. 
I'm going to add an empty space in between just to keep my code organized. And I'm going to add what we call an integer. Now an integer is just a number, but it has to be a whole number, meaning there are no decimals in it. I'll show you an example. But if we're keeping track of how much money we have, I'm going to say self dot money equals zero because we start the game with no money. However, if you wanted to start with money, you could change this number to be anything you want. You could say it's 100, or you could say it's 50. Now, if we're using integers, we don't want any decimals, so you can't have any cents in there. This would be called a float instead, short for floating point decimal. We'll look at those another time. Integers can also be negative. You could start with negative 50 money, so you got a debt to pay off. But to keep our game simple, I'm just going to make us start off with zero money, and then we'll build up from there. So, if money is a number, we can also add to it. Inside the loop, when we collide with that gem, we can increase the amount of money we have. So I'm going to add another line inside this if statement, and I'm going to say self dot money plus equals one. So every time we collect a gem, we get a money. Now in order to display it to us, I'm also going to do a print message. And inside this print, I'm not going to write an apostrophe this time. What I'm going to do is I'm going to print that money variable. So every time we collect a gem, we're going to see how much money we have. If I hit play, check out the console, there we go, we've collected one gem. And if I collect this one, I got two. And that's it, we got no more gems. Next, let's look at the collision between the player and the bat. This one will be a little bit simpler, and I'll show you how. We want to do another collision check between the player and another object. So we're going to say if get collision between self, but this time it's going to be with the bat. Now the difference for this collision is that it doesn't matter which bat we're colliding with. Yes, we only have one in the game, but if we had more, they're all going to cause the same effect. They're going to hurt the player. For now, we're going to say if the player collides with a bat, we're going to destroy the player. So to accomplish that, we still use the destroy function, but this time we're destroying self since we're inside the player already. And just like that, the collision check is finished. If the player touches the bat, he gets destroyed. And it'll work, just like that. Poof! Oh no! If you want, add more gems to your game so you can collect more money. In the next lesson, we're going to add another character to our game who can give us a sword. We'll also look at some different types of variables to use. I'll see you there.